shallow the plane line and you gotta move your right sacrum. You gotta have some flexion. Oh, you watch, his, watch his chest flexion. Terrible. God almighty. We got a big one here for you guys today. We are going to work on getting you into a good solid impact position with your lower half so that you have much more stability out of your hips and a really good solid impact position for you to be able to deliver the club from. Golf swing change takes some time. It's not glamorous, it's not sexy, but you can get it done if you follow this plan. Let's go have some fun. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Big disclaimer. I have to give you this disclaimer because if I don't, you're all going to start working on this movement and you have no business working on this movement. If you have not yet checked out the transition video that I just posted on Sunday of last week, I'm gonna put it up here on the screen for you right now. Stop watching this video, go watch that one, and then bring your booties back here so that we can work on the finishing move to this. Because honestly, if you don't transition properly in your golf swing, then you're never gonna make your post up happen properly. Are we all clear on that? Capiche? Okay, good. First order of business. I am going to be using an impact bag here today. You do not have to have an impact bag. An impact bag is great for many different reasons. What I want you to understand is what an impact bag actually does. Because I watch so many people, so many people, grab this bag, whether it's black, yellow, red, or whatever it is, and they go out there and they just start pounding away. They just start hitting it a whole bunch of times and they think that that's going to make them better at golf. It's not just to hit. What it's doing is it's stopping you at the point of contact so that you can check your positions. Why would you want to check your positions? To make sure that you're doing them right. If you don't have an impact bag, totally fine. You can still do this drill. I would suggest that you get a big pile of towels or some big fluffy pillows, put those down on the ground so it can stop you. We're not gonna start with a whole lot of speed when we're first checking these movements anyways. We're gonna strip things down, we're gonna do things very slow and concise, and then as we go through the program, we're gonna start speeding things up, and we're gonna get you ready for showtime, and, and you're gonna start hitting the golf ball with some gusto, which is what we like to do. We like to hit it with some gusto. First order of business, we are gonna learn what's the position like. Well, the first thing I want you to understand is that your lead leg is gonna Going to be moving to a passively straight position. What do I mean when I say passively straight? I know a lot of you at home are probably asking that question. Passively straight is like if you and I were standing there having a conversation, we were talking about the latest Star Trek movie that you saw or something that you like to do on the weekends. We're standing there talking back and forth. We're not really thinking about what our legs are doing. You're probably going to be standing there in a passively straight position. So you notice that my legs, I don't have them locked out into this really uncomfortable position. And I'm not sitting way down into my knees. The second piece of this is that your lead hip is going to be pulled back or your hips are going to be open somewhere in the ballpark between 45 and 55 degrees. Now, I know a lot of you at home are like, how in the hell am I gonna measure if my hips are open 45 to 55 degrees? I don't have any of this fancy data, data tracking stuff available to me. I don't have gears available to me. There's a simple way that you can do this. You can simply put an alignment stick on the ground or a golf club, and you can take another golf club, and you can put a 45 degree angle coming off that. And now what you can do is you can get your hips open and try to match your belt line and make sure it's parallel to that line. There's some pretty easy things to think about in order to make this movement happen in your golf swing. So once you make your transition onto your lead side, and you've got a lot of that pressure underneath that lead ankle, somewhere between 80 and 85% of your pressure, what you're gonna be doing is, is your first move is to push down into the ground. You're gonna be pushing into the ground. Guess what the ground's gonna be doing? It's gonna be pushing back. So as you're pushing as hard as you want down into the ground, what you're gonna be doing is, is you're gonna be working to pull that left hip or your lead hip back and away from the golf ball to open your hips up. For those of you that that don't have tons and tons of mobility in your hips because you're a little bit restricted or you can use a little bit of help from your right leg. But the main goal here is to get that lead leg to a passively straight position and get the hips open to about 45 degrees. This is the, this is the important piece here. If you do this the right way, then what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna help slow the hips down, which in turn is gonna slow the torso and the shoulders down and in turn allow your arms to start working independently so that you can deliver all the speed at that point where it matters the most and that is contact. How we wanna do this now is I want you to go ahead and preset yourself in this position, shift your hips left, put about 80% of your weight underneath your lead foot, push down to the ground and pull the hips back. Huge piece of information for you at home. When you're making this movement happen, you have to keep your head and your chest down over the golf ball. There's going to be a lot of desire to push down on the ground and pull the hip back and have your head and chest doing this. What's that gonna do? It's gonna lead to some freaking chaos and you're not gonna like what you're gonna see for result. You need to maintain posture through this position. So a good way to think about maintaining posture without having to think about the technical nuts and bolts with it is simply just keep your head and chest where it is. You're gonna shift your hips left, feel about 80% of your weight underneath your lead ankle, okay? You're gonna push down to the ground and pull the hips back. 
Keep your head and chest down. Hold that position for a second. A lot of you at home are gonna feel some stretch in your hamstrings. You might feel a little bit in your quads. You're gonna start feeling a little bit of your glutes. You're probably gonna call me or message me the next day and say, my glutes are sore, I'm on, I'm, I'm on fire here. Those are good muscles to have in the golf swing. Your glutes are stabilizers. Now, let's talk about some drills on how we're gonna move into this exact position. And then we're gonna start learning how to sequence it all up and then build it back into our golf swing. Here we are, we are ready to start. The first thing I want you to remember is that sequence and synchronicity of movement is very much key here. So many times amateur golfers at home want to make that transition move happen and it looks good, but you start firing out of the wrong order. You start moving from your hands and your arms immediately. Why? It feels like you're going to hit the golf ball over that mountain like Uncle Rico can throw a football over that mountain. I get it. However, if you start getting out of order, then you're going to find that your golf swing lacks a lot of speed and a lot of power. Come on in. Lots of distractions out here, Atlantic. As I was saying, so how I want you to handle business is you're gonna get your impact bag out, your pile of towels or your pile of pillows, whatever you prefer. You're gonna set it up. You're gonna put the bag in position where it would be close to your ball. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna make a little half backswing here. So you're gonna make a half a backswing. You're gonna shift your weight onto your lead foot and you're gonna push that lead ankle into the ground and open the hips up. And then you're going to hit the bag. It feels like I'm a, a dad holding your hand in public. I get it. But you have to do things slow at first to learn the movements. So we're gonna do it slow again. We're gonna try to do this about 10 to 15 reps. Little half swing, transition, post up by driving that ankle on the ground, clearing the hip, hit the back. Half swing, transition, post, release. That's the starting point of your practice session. Now, if you're out of the driving range, a lot of people are gonna look at you like you're weird. But at the end of this, you can look back at them and say, I'm hitting the golf ball a lot further than you are and I'm hitting a lot more consistent than you are. Second piece, now we're gonna start adding some blending to this. We're gonna start moving dynamically, but we're not gonna be making full swings here. We're gonna still go back to that half swing mark or three quarter swing mark. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the post up move and the hitting of the bag happens simultaneously. So you're gonna push down to the ground, hip back, and at the same time, as that hip is pulling back and you're visualizing it open to 45 degrees, you're going to snap the club down into the bag. So it's gonna look like this. Half to three quarter swing, post, snap the club into the bag. Now you're gonna stop and you're gonna check your position. Why are you gonna check your position? Because you need to know if it's right or not. You can see here that my hips are open. You can see that when I get to this position, I'm in a passively straight position with my lead leg. I met the requirements of what I was trying to get done. If you notice that your lead leg is not passively straight, if your hips aren't open 45 degrees, then you need to go back to step one and break it apart. So we're gonna do one or two more reps, half to three quarter back swings. Okay, post, release. Okay, let's do that one more time. Okay, half to three quarters, post release. Now, let's move on to the third and final phase before we start trying to hit some golf balls. This is where we're now gonna make it very realistic. We're gonna make it more like a golf swing. The max speed that I want you to start out at is 80%. 80% speed. So it's gonna be like kind of like a three quarter to almost a full swing. It can be a fuller swing, just with a little bit of gusto taken out of it. And set yourself up, get ready to rock and roll, and just shift your hips left over to your lead side and open them up. Hold that position real quick. Come back, hands and arms come on the club. And now we're gonna go, okay? And we're gonna check the positions. Always check your positions. So if you saw what I did there, is I preset myself in the position that I'm gonna to try to work to. Why? Because I wanna feel it, I wanna see it, I wanna kinda of get the feel and the visuals all tied together. I'm gonna to set myself up, and now I know where I'm going. Okay, now you can see that I'm much better into this position here. Let's do it three or four more times. Okay, check the positions. Now we're ready for business. So I'm gonna do a two to one ratio, but what I want you to remember is, is I don't want you to take a lot of time after you do these two reps and then hit a golf ball. You've got the movements done right. You've gone through the processes, okay? You're ready to start rocking and rolling. Don't take a lot of time because it's gonna start filtering in a lot of thoughts. And then you're gonna try to get too technical. I want you just to stay in movement. So we're gonna do two reps. Actually, you know what? For time's sake, let's just do one-to-one. -one. We are going to do a one-to-one -one because I know that time is important. When we do this, I want you to remember Take your hips, preset them into the position, feel and see the body into the spot that you wanna to get to. 
Reset yourself, get there. Don't take a lot of time, get the golf ball ready and go ahead and rock and roll. I really don't hit it any better than that. Did I just kill somebody down there? Did you hear that sound? You need to come see this divot. Always tell yourself you want a roadmap of where you're trying to go. You gotta know where you're trying to go. You gotta teach yourself this new position. Follow this plan about how you're gonna start putting some movement to that position. Golf is not really about positions. Golf is about how we move through positions. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's drill. Go out there, have some fun with it. If you have any questions or comments on today's video, then please post those up below. You guys have been great so far. Thank you so much for all the, the love and support that you guys have offered. I really appreciate it. I love, love, love teaching the game of golf and I love being able to help you guys get better at the game of golf.